Right, so we'll start with uh, Yela Kaplan, who's going to um, be talking Marconi OpenStack queuing notification service. And uh, Yela is a, a software engineer at the cloud team at Red Hat. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, thank you. Um, so, I'm Yela. Um, I'm both uh, nervous and excited to be here. Um, so, I'm working for Red Hat, uh, mostly around virtualization. I've been contributing to the over it, uh, mostly around the storage area, and to OpenStack, to the Marconi project. <clears throat> so, today I want to talk to you about uh, Marconi, which is a queuing and notification service for OpenStack. <clears throat> so, what we're going to talk about today is why do we need a messaging service for OpenStack? What is Marconi? I want to give you a high-level overview of what Marconi actually looks like, and I will also give you some uh, use cases about how you can actually deploy Marconi and use it in your own cloud environment. So let's talk a bit about uh, the project's history. So the project doesn't really have a big history. It's, it's pretty young. It was uh, started at uh, January 2013 uh, by Rackspace and Red Hat. Uh, it was incubated into OpenStack um, during the high house uh, dev cycle. Uh, it is currently production ready, and we really hope it will get into the next uh, June release into OpenStack. Um, so first of all, before we start talking about Marconi, I want, I want us to talk a bit about OpenStack. So here you can see a picture of the OpenStack services. So uh, OpenStack is basically a set of services that are running on distributed machines throughout your infrastructure. Um, and they are pretty much independent to one another, uh, but they also need to talk to one another. So currently they're using a centralized um, message broker in order to do that. Uh, and what we want uh, to do with Marconi is introduce to you an alternative to this uh, message broker in cases where the message broker is just not good enough or not secure enough for your use case. Um, so as I said, we have a lot of independent services in OpenStack, and there are also a lot of uh, messaging technologies, which means different languages, and we want to have one unified way for the services to talk to one another. So basically, we have a missing piece in OpenStack. Uh, we want to have a couple of things. So first of all, we want to have a queuing service for OpenStack. We also want to be able to have a notification as a service. This means that we want a service to be able to publish messages to other services in OpenStack. Also, we want to have a really lightweight messaging API, uh, which means it will allow us to integrate uh, services using one unified API that will be really simple to use and it will cause no extra cost uh, to your infrastructure while deploying it. So how are we going to do that? Um, you're probably wondering uh, if I'm talking about just yet another messaging broker because we have so many. Why, why would you need just another one? And there's also a really nice joke about it. Uh, you probably know it. Um, so I want to reassure you that you don't have to worry uh, in Marconi, we are not uh, aiming to replace any existing messaging technologies. Uh, we are aiming to use uh, existing messaging technologies and to sit, sit on top of them and use them. <clears throat> also, Marconi is not aiming to be a task manager. We have Celery, which is a distributed task manager, and Marconi aims to talk to Celery, it is able to talk to Celery, and we want Celery to, to sit on top of Marconi and use it. Also, 
Marconi is not a queue provisioning service. It will not allow you to install any of your uh, underlying technologies. You will still have to install everything yourself and deploy everything yourself. You will still use the messaging technologies you are using today, but you will use Marconi on top of these technologies. So now that we know what Marconi is not, uh, let's talk about what Marconi is. So Marconi is a really simple and lightweight uh, RESTful data API, and what it aims to do is to unify your existing uh, messaging technologies. What do I mean by unify? It means not just uh, to sit on top of them, but also that you could use different messaging technologies in your infrastructure and in your deployment at the same time. So what we aim to do is um, to create an open source alternative to SQS and SNS. Uh, do you know these services by Amazon? Uh, okay, so um, uh, basically SQS and SNS are both uh, services by Amazon. Uh, SQS is a simple queuing service and SNS is a simple notification service. Um, the first one provides you queues, uh, and the second one provides notifications. They are both uh, separate services, and what we aim to do with Marconi is to supply you these two services in one single service, uh, which is Marconi. Uh, and we aim Marconi to be used uh, by application running on the OpenStack cloud. So now I want to talk to you uh, about a few really exciting use cases we have for Marconi. Um, so the first one uh, is actually to deploy SQS uh, using the Marconi service. So you will just have your own uh, queuing service and you will be able to sell queues to your users. Um, also, like the rest of the use cases are aiming to be used by uh, OpenStack services, so uh, the first one is the Ryzen notifications. So when you start an instance and whether it fails or succeeds, uh, Ryzen uh, gets a notification, so uh, you are able to do it today, but uh, we want, like, uh, Horizon is just polling, but we want it to be able uh, to get notifications, so it will be able to do that uh, using Marconi. Um, also, we have the accelerometer service, so uh, it generates events and uh, statistics based on notification it gets from the other OpenStack services. Uh, and currently, it does that using the centralized message broker of OpenStack. Um, sorry. <laughs> so. It is using the MQP message broker, and it uses a really low-level API, and what we aim to do is to give it a more high-level API, so it sits on top of the messaging technology. Um, and we want uh, to allow uh, guest agents uh, intercommunications, which means you have a guest agent running inside of an instance, and if you have a failure, you will want to be able to communicate to the other guest agents or to services in OpenStack. Uh, currently, you are able to do that using the message, messaging broker, but uh, in this case, it's just not secure enough, so we want to introduce uh, an alternative. Um, so now I want us uh, to move to uh, a high-level overview of what Marconi actually looks like. So Marconi's architecture is pretty simple. Um, it's composed of uh, three layers, uh, the transport, the API, and the storage. Uh, the transport uh, is the actual protocol uh, that the clients talk to, uh, and the API uh, introduces you to the Marconi uh, resources and the actions you can perform on those through the protocol. 
and the storage are the actual messaging technologies that Marconi talks to, the underlying messaging technologies we're using. So a really important thing I want to mention about Marconi's architecture is that it's composable. So you can uh, play with it much like as if it were Lego bricks. Um, it is obviously plugin based in order to allow you to do this. Um, and each plugin has to conform to a well-defined API. So you can just choose the transport and the storage you want to use and just uh, use the suitable plugin. So on top of the transport layer, we have the authentication middleware. It is actually provided by a third party. Currently, we support uh, two authentication methods, which are uh, Keystone and basic HTTP. So with Keystone, you basically have all the multi-tenancy features that it already allows. So you will be able to use uh, multiple tenants and multiple uh, projects uh, under the same Marconi deployment at the same time. Uh, obviously, you can write your, if, if you want to, you can write your own authentication method. You can just write a plugin for Marconi to use it. Uh, on the transport uh, layer, we currently uh, support, uh, that's our production protocol, which is HTTP. This is what uh, we use. Uh, we plan to support, uh, we target uh, TCP for the June release. Um, on, on the API layer, we expose Marconi's resources. So the messages are the main and most important resource in Marconi. That is actually what Marconi is all about. It's about delivering messages. So these messages can be read, posted, and claimed from a queue, which is a logical entity. Um, and you can claim the message from a queue. This means that uh, when a worker claims a message from a queue, the other workers can process those messages at that time. Uh, also, you can configure all of your messages, queues, and claims in terms of uh, TTL. So the storage layer are, are the actual messaging uh, technologies you're using, which you will deploy by yourself in your uh, infrastructure. So currently we support uh, two messaging uh, technologies. The first one is uh, MongoDB, and the second one is SQL Chemi. Uh, we have both of these plugins already. <clears throat> Excuse me. So SQL Chemi is not really recommended for production environment. Uh, it's not really good for uh, queuing systems uh, because of its performance. So what we use and what we recommend for uh, production is the MongoDB plugin. Uh, it is currently used in the uh, Rackspace cloud service. Um, and we also uh, target to have a ready support for the OpenStack Juno release. Uh, so MongoDB will allow you to have uh, fully durable queues and really persistent queues. And on the other hand, you will have Redis, which will allow you uh, in-memory support for your queues. So if your application needs a really high throughput, it will allow you this. So let's move on to how you can use and uh, deploy Marconi in your own infrastructure. So we have two ways to do that. Uh, the first one is using a single storage cluster. So you will have uh, multiple Marconi nodes running in parallel. 
uh, in your infrastructure uh, on top of a single uh, storage cluster. Uh, this storage can be whatever you want, whether it's MongoDB or Redis or whatever uh, fits your application needs. You just have to write the plugin from Marconi and it just, you choose it according to your application needs. Another way uh, to deploy Marconi is using uh, storage pools. Uh, this means uh, that just like before, you will have multiple Marconi nodes. Uh, they're still running in parallel, but instead of uh, sitting on top of only one storage cluster, they will uh, sit on top of uh, multiple independent clusters. So you can choose uh, these clusters to be whatever you want. Uh, and you can configure Marconi to talk to, to these clusters on a queue basis. This means that if you want your queue to be fully durable, you will choose it to be on a MongoDB storage cluster. And if you, if you want it to be in memory and to have a high throughput, you will use the uh, ready storage cluster. So let's move on to the really great things about Marconi. So uh, the first thing is that obviously it's open source, so we all here love open source. Um, it allows you to have a really simple uh, unified API, which means uh, you will be able to use multiple uh, messaging technologies. Um, it is also uh, providing us uh, with FIFO guaranteed for your queues. Uh, which is something that uh, SQS does not provide. So obviously this feature uh, depends on your underlying storage. Um, currently all of the storages we support are supporting a, a FIFO guaranteed and since Marconi uh, is configured on a queue basis, you can uh, make sure that your queue will be FIFO guaranteed. Uh, we also provide you with storage pools, uh, which allows you to use different messaging technologies at the same time and uh, control the throughput of your applications. Um, also, a really important thing about Marconi is that it's really easy to scale. Just as long as you have enough nodes in your infrastructure, you will be able to have as many Marconi nodes as you want. And as we talked earlier about the use cases, uh, we target uh, Marconi to be used by OpenStack services. And uh, since it's really lightweight and easy to install and it plays nicely with everything else you have in your infrastructure, so it just uh, fits in your stack. So before uh, we close, I want us to talk a bit about our plans for the future, or our roadmap for the Juno release. So um, something we're really excited about having are uh, Q flavors, which are just like uh, the Nova compute flavors that allow you to configure your instance. So the Q flavors will allow you to configure your queues. So we, you will just be able to create a queue and choose a flavor whether you want your queue to be uh, fully durable or to be in memory, you will be just able uh, to choose a flavor and Marconi will choose uh, the right storage cluster for you. Also, we aim to have a live migration of queues. So in case you have a really heavy read or heavy write queue, and it's basically just killing your storage pool, you will want to be able to migrate it to another storage pool without any downtime to your application. Another thing we aim to do that we already discussed is having a ready support that will allow us uh, in-memory queues. And uh, for the future, we aim to have AMQP support. Uh, we have a lot of discussion about this topic upstream. Uh, it was also planned for uh, the June release, but uh, we had some problems, so if you have some knowledge around uh, the area of messaging and AMQP and uh, unifying technologies, then we'd really love uh, to hear from you and 
to, for you to join um, the discussion upstream. Um, so after this talk, I really hope you got a clear view of what Marconi is and what it actually aims to do. Um, if you're already using Marconi, we'd really love to hear your feedback. Uh, and if you have some new and interesting uh, use cases after this talk, then we'd really love to hear your feedback. You uh, can contact us. Um, so that's it. Um, do you have any questions? Any questions at all? <laughs> no? Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Oh, oh, here we go. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So currently, uh, Marconi is used in production in the Rackspace cloud service. Uh, we are not really familiar with any other uh, production environments, but it is production ready. So you are uh, just welcome to install it and try it. Uh, hi. So while I understand that hi. Marconi is Where? Oh, okay. Sorry. So while I understand that Marconi is supposed to be a like core building block of OpenStack and to need some special requirements. Uh, what else makes it any, any kind different than other queuing solutions? Because you started your talk by saying it's not a, a competitor to, let's say, MPQ or Kafka or other messaging technologies. So how is it not uh, yet another queuing and notification service in competition with MPQ and Kafka and et cetera? Mm -hmm. So it is a queuing and notification service. Uh, it is not another messaging broker. That's uh, what I mean by that. Um, so it is basically just giving you another level of isolation on top of your messaging broker. So uh, your application will be able to just use a really simple and high level API and not deal with the underlying uh, messaging technologies API. So if you're currently using an MQP broker and you decide it's not uh, good enough for your application needs and you want to change it, then you will just be able to deploy another messaging technology, like let's say, for an instance, just install MongoDB if you want a really high uh, and f fully durable queue. Uh, and you, you will just deploy the new technology and you won't have to change any of your application's code. But, well, with AMPQ being an open protocol, I can use RabbitMQ or whatever other service which uses whatever it wants as a storage mm -hmm. with whatever reliability I need from that software. I know that Rabbit is the most popular one, but not the only one. Yeah, and so you will be able to, to use AMQP and also other technologies. That's the purpose. Okay. Hi. So when you say that Marconi uh, could be used to uh, let different OpenStack services talk together, that means we'll have a new driver in Oslo messaging? Um, actually, I, I don't really have a short answer for that, so I'd really li like for us to talk about it later. Okay. Thank you okay. very much. Any more questions? Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.